Okay, the fourth problem in this particular chapter, chapter number eight, is a bank reconciliation. Now, in a bank reconciliation, what we are doing is we are looking at the bank statement ending balance and the balance in the cash account, the checking account on our books or the ledger account for checking. And in our particular case, our books say that our balance is $9,000 at the end of the month. The bank statement comes in and says it's 10129 Now, we shouldn't get overjoyed and say, hey, well, I've got another $1,129. Because we might have written some checks here on the books, mailed them, and they've yet to clear the bank. So we cannot spend that difference. That difference has to be reconciled. And so in looking at the problem, we see here in number one, the deposits to the bank account as recorded on the bank statement are compared to the deposit slips in by the company. It is noted that the last deposit of $400 occurred after banking hours, which would be on the last day of the month. And therefore, it has not been picked up on the bank statement. So what happened is we made a deposit on the last day of the month. We put it in our books and records, so it is included in the 9,000, but it hasn't been picked up yet by the bank because they closed their doors and cut their uh, uh, statement off at the end of business hours on the last day of the month. So to reconcile out, we have to add something called the deposit and transit to the bank statement. The next item I see happen to be checks returned with the bank statement are compared to checks written and listed in the checkbook. So you say, these are the checks that I wrote on my books, and these are the checks that are returned. Now, we all know that banks don't return checks anymore, but they do give you a listing. Some actually give you a copy of the checks that have cleared the bank. So you're going to go through. You're going to compare what you wrote in your books and what is cleared. Again, there are going to be some outstanding checks. In our case, there were $1,456. Here it is right there. So I add the deposit. I take out the outstanding checks. And I happen at this point in time get an adjusted balance of $9,073. Much closer to our $9,000 than what the bank statement had. To. But I'm still not there yet. I'm $73 difference between the $9,000 and this adjusted 9073 So I continue to look at the differences between the two accounts. It says in number three, the ending balance on the bank statement and the books are determined. And here are the balances which I've already told you about. Number four, other information contained on the bank statement not previously known to the company is, and here are some items. There is a note that a customer paid of $200 that's been collected by the bank and our account went up by. Often banks will collect monies owed us and then put it in our account and at the end of the month will notify us what was collected. But we haven't yet put that in our books. So I have to increase my books by $200. Also, there is an error here of $18. And we will find that down in number five. Uh, and another item, in number four, we see that a check from Frank only of $120 previously deposited. So Frank gave us a check. We put it and recorded it in our books. And we deposited it. Well, Frank didn't have any money in his checking account. So the bank is going to take that money out of our account. We didn't know it until now. So we're going to have to take out this $120 check. That's called an NSF check. NSF stands for non-sufficient funds. We're going to have to set it up as an account receivable on our books. We also find out that the bank has charged us $25 for its services. This includes a $10 fee for the NSF check. So we're going to have to take $25 out of our account because the bank has taken that. That's a service fee. Now, our account is not an interest-bearing account. But if it were, we would have to increase up here for any interest that the checking account had earned. Now, let's take a look at this $18. 
This is at number five. A bank reconciliation prepared, it doesn't balance. The difference is 18. So a transposition error is looked for. Now what a transposition error is, it is an error where you have changed, flipped, two numbers in whatever you're dealing with. It's called a transposition. And if you go and you look, if you can divide the difference that we're looking for, in this case, what we're looking for is a difference of $18. If you can divide that by 9 and it's divided evenly, it's a good indication that it's a transposition. 18 is divided by 9, gives you 2. So I'm looking for a transposition. I'm also looking for a transposition that is in either the one spot, that is, so whatever the number is, it might have been 1,001. I must have been transposed something in the one account. And the difference between the number I transposed, the, or the numbers that I transposed, the difference is 2. That's the result of being divided by 9. I gave me 2. Looking at the problem. An error is found. Check number 141 was written for 235 and cleared the bank at 235. But it was recorded in our books at 253. All right, again, we recorded it at 253. It should have been recorded at 235. What are the two numbers that were transposed? A 5 and a 3. Were they transposed in the ones column? Yes, they were. What is the difference between the two numbers transposed? The difference between 3 and 5 is 2. So when you divide what you're, the difference that you're looking for, in this case 18, when you divide it by 9, I got 2. If I had gotten 20, I'd be looking for something in the tens and hundreds column. But here, since it was 2, I'm looking for something in the ones and tens column. And the difference I'm looking for is 2. The difference between 3 and 5 is 2. All right, so I've made an error. I happen to have deducted uh, $235. I should, uh, excuse me, I deducted $253. I deducted too much. So I, to get my bank account to work, I've got to add back the error of $18. So when I take the $9,000 plus the $200 collected plus the error, less the NSF, less the bank fee, I get $9,073. Ah, I've adjusted to $9,073 here, adjusted to $9,073. Equal, I have found the difference. But the bank reconciliation is not done yet. I now have to make a journal entry to account for the differences. Now, students often get a little bit of trouble here. They don't know what items to adjust. Do I use these items right here? Or do I go over here and adjust these? Or do I adjust all of them? Well, let's think for a second. Has that $400 deposit been recorded in our books? Yes. Why is it up here? It's up here because the bank has yet to receive it. Is the bank going to receive it? Sure. These checks, have they been recorded in our books? They sure have when we wrote them out. Why is it up here? Because the bank has yet to receive it. So these adjustments, these items that we see here on the bank statement that are adjusted to the bank statement are already in our books. We don't need to account for those again. But these items right here need to be adjusted. So we're going to come back in just a second, and I'm going to show you the adjusted entry for these items right here. OK, we need to make a journal entry for these adjustments to our book balance. And over here, I have made two entries. You can make one if you would like. But I like to have two entries. I like to have an entry for the additions. So I, had, I collected a note, and I, there was an error. These are ads, so I debit cash for the total, 218. And I credit, I collected a note, or the bank collected the note. The individual doesn't owe us anymore, so I credit notes receivable. Now, there was an error. And in the problem, it didn't tell us what we originally recorded the money to. 
I'm going to make an assumption here that it was to utility expense. But it could have been supplies, it could have been advertising expense. But again, so if you want to know where I got the utility expense, I'm just making that assumption. We would have to go back and look at the check to see what it was originally recorded to. The second journal entry to, to adjust this are going to be the deducts. So I happen to have an NSF check. The individual gave us money, a check. There wasn't any money in that account. So I've got to set that back up as an account receivable. They owe us $120. I happen to have a bank fee. That goes into bank fee expense. That adds up to a total of $145. It was a deduction here, and therefore it's a reduction of cash. Again, could you have put these two entries together? And the answer is yes, you could. I would rather you put them in two separate entries. What if you don't make these entries? Well, if you don't make the entries, next month when you go to try to reconcile out your cash account, it's not going to reconcile. Why? It's because this balance in the books hasn't been adjusted for these issues right here. You need to reconcile the account and then do the adjustments every month. Now you'll notice right here, I've indicated these are adjusting journal entries. When are adjusting journal entries done? At the end of the month. Why are they done? To get your accounts to their proper balance. When are adjusting journal entries made in the accounting cycle? Just before you prepare financial statements. Why is that? It's because we want our financial statements to have their correct balance on them. The correct balance for cash is not 9,000. The correct balance for cash is 9,073. We need to make these entries to get the account to its proper balance. This is what will show up on the balance sheet for this cash account. All right, that happens to be chapter number eight. There's one additional thing that I will want you to do and in the appendices, there is an analysis of recording the purchase of inventory at the net method or the gross method. And you will be responsible for both of those.